up everyone hey there how's it going what's up everybody thanks for tuning in how's it going guys just trying to pin this comment to the top we'll get this going got a super special guest today I'm really excited that you guys are here How's it going? What's up? I'm good. Thanks for asking. Thanks so much for asking. I appreciate that. How are you guys doing? Awesome. What's up, guys? Awesome. So today is really, really exciting. I'm actually I like this is this is really cool. So today we have a super special guest on. I'm going to give him a brief introduction, then he's going to join us. But we actually have a CEO of Rhino uh, joining us today. So Kyle is a hardware entrepreneur and filmmaker from the Pacific Northwest. His journey started in 2011 when he was making films on a GoPro for an outdoor company. After upgrading to a DSLR, he realized he needed something more compact, easy to use tools to help tell his story more creatively. Ever since then, he and his team at Rhino have been designing ultra high quality and user friendly filmmaking gear. So if uh, everyone's familiar with Rhino, uh, you guys know that they make some absolutely killer stuff. And the journey, uh, I was watching some interviews last night with Kyle, and the journey that they've went on to finally get to this point is, is actually really incredible. So um, I am waiting for, for Rhino to join in and we can get this thing going with Kyle. This is really, really cool. We, we're going to cover all kinds of stuff, how they got started, uh, Kyle in general, and, and his workload and what that looks like and talk about products and maybe some upcoming products as well. So let's see if we can get Rhino here on the line. And also guys, feel free to ask us questions. I know how I have that pinned at the bottom. Uh, we have someone taking these questions in. So if we don't answer them right off the bat, we will get right to them and answer them in between questions and in between conversations. So um, just because your question doesn't get answered immediately, we will definitely try to answer those questions as soon as possible. So let's see here, see if I can go live with Do, do, do. How's everyone doing though? How's how's the workload this week? Who's staying creative out there? Let me know. All right, so we are just getting some stuff fired away here. Filmmaking Solutions, what's up guys? Thanks for joining. Appreciate that. All good, bro. Hope you're doing good. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, good to hear, man. It's Tommy's world. Appreciate that. All right, so we got like uh, Rhino coming in here shortly. We we're just figuring out some uh, technical difficulties here. What's everyone working on right now? Who's staying busy? You guys been out taking any cool photos or any video outside? It's so nice now. It's it's about that time where the weather has just gotten great. At least here in Salt Lake, that is. Awesome, BT Photography. I'm glad to hear that, man. I'm glad that everything's working out for you. What are you using? You're using the Pro? The Have you been lucky enough to get your hands on a studio yet? Or have you are you still using uh, the Torch 2.0s or Torch 1.0s? What are you What are you using? I'm super glad you're happy with them. That's awesome. Yeah, same here, Tommy. Yeah, absolutely. That's, it's crazy. I feel like we've all kind of migrated to the YouTube world now just because uh, we have time now. It's really, really cool. I'm glad that the backlog is, is getting unclear. That's huge. I know that, that it takes a big weight off your shoulders as a creator. Test, testing rust converter on old strong man weights. That sounds awesome. That sounds really cool. And we're going to chat with you on Thursday, my man. So I'm looking forward to it. You're using the pro and the torch. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Two very dynamic and different lights, but obviously extremely beneficial in their own ways. I've got a pro here, I've got a studio here, and I've got torches behind me and I got a pro above me. So definitely, uh, definitely diverse. <laughs> 
That's good. Yeah. It's good to have the weight off your back. It's, it's just crazy. Um, when you get that backlog going and it's so easy to, well, I shouldn't say it's easy, but it's so much quicker sometimes to shoot something than it is to actually edit it. And I know how long it takes for it to, it's just kind of setting in the queue. So Lytra studio sesh in pool last night, underwater photography is tougher than it looks. Yep, sure is. But Hey, how cool is that? that the studio can go underwater. That's I mean, the size of this thing is like this big and it's fully waterproof. You can just toss it in the pool. That is just too cool. How Salt Lake? It's good, man. Just uh, just stay in the studio, staying creative. Just, you know, trying to be as creative as possible in times like this. And I think it's uh, really made me realize, um, you know, how much stuff is uh, in the queue. Just like you were saying, you cleared the backlog. All right, guys. So we got Rhino on the line here and let's add them in. Rhino camera gear. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Just waiting for that connection to establish, and we are going to get started. Hey, Kyle. Kyle, what's up, man? How are you? I'm good, man. I am terrible at anything social media. So let me put this on this tripod here. No worries, dude. You're sideways on us. Oh, should I go vertical here? Go go vertical. Just be, and the only reason we do that, I you know, vertical is a big no-no normally. But for this, just so the comments come in vertically. There we go. You know we, what? This is going to be a cluster because my mount can't go vertical. I can go sideways. I can go like 45. Go 45. -er. Can, you, can you go 45 the other way? It looks like you're doing cartwheels. <laughs> I know, man. This is great. <laughs> um, yeah. I can... Hmm. I can set up my phone. Hold on a second. Let's get creative here. I mean, I wouldn't expect anything less at Rhino getting creative. Right. Hold on. I have a, a little Ikea light I'm hacking right now. All oh, right. good. We cool? How, yeah, it looks good. How's things going your way, man? It's been a while. Last time uh, we hung out was at NAB last year. I know. I know. Dude, it's been a crazy year. It's been yeah. a crazy year. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, man, it, time flies by, but then also feels like it's dragging it sometimes. So, um, yeah. you know, you know what I mean? You know, like it, it, you look back and you, you realize how much you've accomplished, but at the same time, it's, you know, it's the grind. It's the hustle yeah. that makes stuff happen. Absolutely. It's kind of like a, it's the best of both worlds. It gives you time to get stuff done. But then again, um, it's a cluster on a whole nother end. So. It's, a, yeah. it's an interesting balance for sure. Exactly. Hey, I'm gonna turn down the e light. It's like blowing yeah. my face up. Yeah, what you look saying? a little look a little hot there. A little hot, yeah. Awesome. There we go. I, I appreciate you hopping on, man. I gave you a yeah. kind of a brief introduction of you know what we talked about prior to this and and everything, but I. I I think it's really cool that you were able to hop on with us today. I think that um, you've got a lot of really cool insight. I watched an interview with you last night um, from F Stoppers, and that yeah. was that was really, really, really cool. I watched the whole thing, um, and whole like it was two hours. That it's like an hour and a half of watching you talk, man. It was great. I loved it. But I want you know for people who haven't seen that, just go ahead and tell us a little bit about you um, personally, hmm. and then we'll kind of dive in a little bit into Rhino a little bit later. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Uh, personally, man, <clears throat> like, where do you, where do you want me to start? Do you want me to kind of summarize a little bit of that interview with Lee, uh, just at a high level, kind of my background? Yeah. Let's, let's kind of like hear about your background, how you got started in this industry okay. and how things have kind of evolved to where they are now. Yeah. Yeah. So going way back, um, man, I didn't even know that I wanted to be in hardware or be in filmmaking for a long time. Uh, mm -hmm. I followed my brother over to business school. That was like 13 years ago, probably over on the east side of our state at Wazoo and left business school, got a degree in entrepreneurship there, which if anybody watching is interested in getting a business degree, for me personally, it was kind of useless. Um, <laughs> Like, if you have a knack for business, going through those classes feels like common sense. You're like, oh, yeah, of course. Like, yeah, that's how you market. Yeah. Uh, maybe some of the finance classes were, those are the ones I didn't pay attention to, though. So that I should have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? 
so, you know, went through business school. And after that, I was doing just a normal desk job doing insurance sales and was just bored out of my mind. Like, I'm not a paper pusher. Um, I realized that pretty quickly. And then um, kind of just started fiddling around with filmmaking. I was doing some mountaineering stuff. And I, I love gear. Like that's, that's like my guilty pleasure, like any kind of gear, all my hobbies, right? I gear out on, I'm sure like every filmmaker is the same way. You gotta have the camera, you gotta have, gotta have everything. So, um, yeah, I started gear testing and then I started making videos with my GoPro. And yeah. uh, I, I sent them the videos of like, hey, look at this jacket. It's super breathable, it's super cool. And then they said, hey, can you make corporate videos? And I was like, hell yeah, I can make corporate videos. I can do that. Um, and that's probably one of my, my, my biggest strengths and weaknesses is that I, I will jump into something and assume that I can rock it. And then once you get into it, you're like, crap, this, I'm like in way over my head. But you have an opportunity that you open up the door on and that leads to so many new paths, right? Sure, yeah. And so um i'm very thankful i did that so they said okay cool uh how much are you gonna charge for this and i was like five grand you know just like pull the number out of my butt and they paid me and i flew out to colorado i bought my 60d at the time and i was a filmmaker right sure. well you got your first check that's that's the <laughs> thing. Gig. first gig they were happy with the videos good I, a lot of like caleb pikes dslr shooter a lot of philip bloom stuff um <clears throat> that was right around the time that like the 5d came out and then thought i wanted to be a filmmaker for a while until i shot a wedding and realized how much work that is and i was i don't really want to film it for a job like I, I enjoy it as a hobby but as a job it's not my gig um but in that process i started creating i made the stabilizer i watched a bunch of youtube videos on diy stabilizers um and then eventually DIY sliders. And <clears throat> I, I don't know if I shared this in the, the F stoppers video, but um, I had my idea for the stabilizer and I didn't know what to do at that point. I didn't know how to get to, right? And so I ended up going to a camera store and ran into Peter Deering, who's the CEO of Peak Design. Okay. He was in Washington, he was basically in a similar place where he had an idea and he was pitching all these retail camera stores of, uh, Hey, I got this idea. Do you guys want to carry it? And everyone was turning him down. They're like, no, it's a dumb idea. A little clip that goes on your backpack for your camera. You know, it's stupid. Right. And so I met him there and, uh, we kind of connected and he told me about Kickstarter and I was like, man, Kickstarter, like that sounds cool. Like people give you money for an idea that you have no proof that exists. Like that's rad, right? For sure. And so we ended up doing Kickstarter. He raised like 350 grand for his idea. Uh, we raised 80 grand, which was mind blowing to me. Right. And that's where everything started. That was back in 2011. Okay. Almost years ago. So that's, I guess that's every, everything to the point of I have an idea and now I'm trying to execute, but I don't know how. Right. And you just kind of figure it out as you go. Yeah. It's kind of like that, that's initial step process. You want it, you knew you wanted to create, you knew you were kind of a filmmaker. You, you kind of backtracked a little bit. You say, well, I'm a creator now and I want to develop products to make things easier for people. Then you went yeah. into like this gimbal world um, or should I say stabilizer world. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I remember seeing um, like, it was like blue. What was it called? The, the Rhino. At first it was called the easy steady. And then we called it the Rhino Steady after that when we tried to, we call everything Rhino something now. It's just simplified naming. Yeah, well, I, and I remember hearing that, like, you, you talked about how you would, like, heat up PVC in your kitchen. And, yeah. like, that right there to me was just, like, all right, the dude's just, he's just innovative. And you were just looking at ways to simplify solutions for other people, um, you know, before yeah. anyone else had ever done that. And I think just that sacrifice uh whether you're sacrificing your health or your home you know like you're not supposed to cook or, yeah and um, my wife was pregnant at the time that was when right. our yeah right <laughs> is a terrible idea 
<laughs> yeah, and I, I think that was just really, I think that just right there showed me kind of how passionate you were about going into this design field. And obviously, not to jump too far ahead, but that's obviously paid off um, as far as the products go and, and how durable everything is. Um, I know that you talked about, you know, you didn't want to film weddings, but kind of, are you, would you consider yourself now more of like a creative engineer? Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely less of a filmmaker. I'm a filmmaker yeah. in the that I shoot a lot of our promotional videos. Yeah. Uh, I'm way more of a director in that sense. Um, when, I don't know if Ed is watching, um, but Edward Lee, Edward Lee Films, yeah. was with us for a couple of years, and he basically shot, the majority of our stuff for the past couple of years. Yeah. And I went into a, a director role, <clears throat> which is great because I know what I want. But uh, the funny thing is, is that he and I shot probably, it's probably almost a year ago. Now uh, we shot together again after I hadn't shot for a while and me shooting video was awful. Like he was looking <laughs> at my, my monitor and he's like, golly, what the heck are you doing? Like that. <laughs> so it's funny how you kind of get out of a role for a bit. Um, but my role now, yeah, is definitely more of a, like my official title is, uh, CEO and director of product vision, uh, yeah. and more of an engineering role and more of a, like, if I were to describe what I love best, um, and what I think I'm best at is looking at a market and creating a product, like engineering a product from a, a pretty high level that, that fits like a specific product market need. I don't want to say fit twice, product market fit um, that is extremely easy to use, high quality. Like those are some of my, my personal values that I, sure. I throw in. Um, but then just trying to make things better, right? Like make, like looking at a problem. That's why like some of my companies come from um, hobbies that I, I have because then I, I have a hobby. I'm like, Oh, well, that sucks. Like, why does that have to be like that? And then I want to, you know, to try to fi fix that and make my own workflow smoother. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you kind of have this, you okay, okay, this doesn't work in this field. And I know other people are creating and doing the same thing, whether I want to do this or not, I want to figure out a way to solve this solution and make it more functional. Right. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, and I, I think that's obviously very apparent in your work, especially with the the arc. And uh, I have the Evo one. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of that. And then I know obviously the the arc two and everything that's come out recently is just absolutely mind blowing. I'd love to get my hands on that and play with it. It's it's got, you know, the tip yeah. mount, everything. It's just, it's really cool because I remember uh, when you know sliders just came out, and if you wanted to do a, a moving time lapse, anything automated that what didn't you know involve your hand pushing it back and forth manually it involved like yeah. a car battery and like a like satchel and like you had to carry yeah. all this stuff out you know exactly exactly funny funny uh story when we did our first rhino slider video uh, we had the vision for time lapse and the vision for motorization but we had no idea how to get into electronics and okay. so I had promised something that was really naive at the time. I said, within a year, we're going to come out with a motorized solution and, and <laughs> apps and everything to control it. And it was like four years later that actually happened. Right. To, to pull it off in the video, there's a couple time-lapse shots of Mount Rainier. And I still had all of my toys from when I was a kid. And so I took a – you ever play with Kinex as a kid? That's all I had. I was a Kinex right. kid, not a Lego kid. Yeah. Money, money. So I had a Kinex motor that had like a double A battery pack that yeah. I, I had dental floss to the carriage of our slider and then calculated the diameter of the, uh, like the drive shaft, if you will, on the Kinex thing and was like, all right, it needs to be this big for this amount of time to do a four hour time lapse at this RPM and literally shot those videos with dental floss and a Kinex motor. So <laughs> it worked. It was better than a, than a car battery. So that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. We should send that. Into, you should send that into connects and you know, you can, that's our, that's your next brand deal. You can figure out things with connects. Yeah. Connects. <laughs> exactly. No, I think that's really cool. And the reason I brought that up was just, I just remember how much I struggled with out in the field, uh, taking those, that big, you know, whether it was a slider and it was heavy or whether it involved that battery and then you had the motion control itself, which was like another, like bag, you know, it just, it required so much effort. And I remember 
uh, finally getting the the first slide, Evo one in the mail, and I just remember it, it felt like um, like a Zune. You remember like Zune that they came out before, like kind of in the iPod days. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it kind of had that click wheel, and I, I just remember it just being like I didn't have to read an instruction manual. I I kind of knew right off the bat where I was going, what I wanted to do. You know, someone who was unfamiliar with the technology or even the concept of why they would use it. Um, could just they could pick it right up and I thought that was just not only the size of everything and how compact it is but how you know efficient it is too um, and how much you know I've never had any issues with it so um, I just thought all of those things together I mean that's that's game changing you know yeah yeah so what yeah go ahead oh well, I was gonna say that that's that's kind of the goal and everything that we do and I think motion was a simpler problem to solve the, the original motion was we have a slider that needs to move left and right. How do we do that? And my mind like, Hey, let's have a wheel. Like I want a, a wheel that makes it go really smooth left and right. That was, I guess, if you have a spec for a project, that was really the only spec we had it was just like have a screen and have numbers on the screen move and have the thing go left and right. And so with arc two, there's a, it's a lot more complex because you have four different axes that you have to control right. and one or two, you know? And so that was a whole different UX problem that isn't as simple because you have four axes, you know, you don't just have two axes, um, but trying to make it as simple as possible with the feature that has. So, yeah, no, I think that's, that's pretty well accomplished. The last time I had seen the, um, the arc two was at NAB last year. You let me play with it. You had a red setting on it. Um, yeah, yeah. And I remember there was like a tilt mechanism and there was like a, uh, like a nice small screen there that you could see yeah. all of your functionality. And exactly. I, I'm really, I'm really excited to get my hands on that thing. It's, it's really cool. Um, you had a, you had a guy there. I think he worked with you and maybe was a creator, but he's in that commercial that keeps popping up on my Facebook where he's doing this. Oh, <laughs> it's like, okay. yeah. yeah. I get him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was showing me kind of some of the technical aspects of it. And I was just, I just remember, you know, because I had my, um, my uh, Evo one there, my and my the Arc one first gen there. And yeah. I just remember going back to that and being like, it's just crazy how how quick and how fast you guys think over there and how uh, innovative it only took like a year or two, you know, I mean, I know for you, it takes a lot of time. But you know, as a yeah someone on the other yeah. end it's it seems just very natural to you and it's it's as a creator we really appreciate it yeah it that's that's an interesting perspective from the outside because yeah. the outside perspective on like i've been doing this for 10 years now almost and i feel like i am just starting to understand how product development should work yeah um you know i'm constantly learning and then and then dealing with the fallout of when we don't do it well, you know, and like, how do we, like, there's always going to be issues with things, but like the knowledge, I, I don't know if you experienced this as a creator, but the knowledge, like it's, it's always a journey that you're on of where you're at and how you perceive, you know, how you're doing your current job and how things work. And you're always adding to that, but then you look back and you're like, Oh crap, like that could have gone better. And that could have gone better, you know, always. Yeah. So always growing, man. You know, I, I'm pretty hard on myself in that regard of just, I want to be at a, I feel like I'm not like, you're never gonna arrive anywhere, but I'm at least almost at a place where like, I think I understand how this works. Like right. I, you know, and that's in any kind of um, creator, that's always a good feeling you start out not knowing what you don't know. And for me, that was super, um, that was frustrating, you know, so yeah. I wanted and so if anyone's watching like, hey, you know, like I'm here and how do I get there? It was the, the ending answer that we had in the, uh, the F-Stoppers video is like, you take a step, you execute, you, you know, you start, you start somewhere and you start executing and, and that turns into momentum, so. Absolutely. Well, we're, we're always our, you know, you, you say that, you know, you're kind of a creative engineer, but whether whatever field you're in as a creative, we're still creating, right? Whether it's content or you're, you're creating a product and we're our own worst enemy always. Right. So, uh, we, you know, we are the first ones that know we did something wrong and, and we're the first ones that know we did something right. So I think taking those steps and, and learning and, and those steps of failure, I think only help you get better. 
I wanted to ask a, a question. We just had one come in. What, yeah. do you, what do you get inspired by when you look to develop new products? Like what, you know, what's kind of the changing point for you where you're like, okay, well, this needs upped, you know? Yeah, with, with Rhino specifically, I am primarily looking at customer feedback. Uh, we have surveys that we put out and we're trying to look at pain points in people's workflows. Um, and so w whatever it is, you know, if it's sliders, if it's um, like a follow focus or a gimbal, or like we, we've looked into a ton of different um, like lighting, all sorts of so sorts of stuff. We, we try to understand what the problem is because unless you're solving a problem in any kind of business, there's no market for it. Right. Yeah. Um, and so you, that's, that's the key starting place. And then we try to put our secret sauce and say, all right, so that's the problem. What's, you know, thinking with first principles thinking, you know, you remove all of your assumptions and then you, you say, all right, what's the best way to solve this? And then a lot of business thinking comes into mind there because, um, you have to have a business case for it, you know, like you could solve a problem that couldn't even be a, a viable business. So right yeah like what's it mean when someone <clears throat> likes the product versus does that mean it's going to sell you know what i mean yeah there's exactly. there's a lot of different factors there that that play into that and i would imagine over time that you guys that you guys have, have really figured that out but i think again that one step you know maybe two steps forward one step back two steps forward one step back mentality is is just how us as creators think all the time so um, I want to kind of go into the the Rhino Arc 2. Um, yeah. And I want to talk about that. That's because that's kind of your flagship product at this point, yep. right? That's that's the main guy right now. It's it's a whole system, but it's based on the Arc 2. Yeah, let's talk about that. Like, um, you know, you don't have to tell us like everything, but maybe what's the difference between the first model, first gen and the second gen? And, and you know, what is, as far as creativity goes and, and feedback goes from other creators, what are some of the things that, that have just kind of blown you away uh, when getting maybe content back from someone using them? Yeah, yeah. Um, so to answer the first part of the question, our, our first motion control system was just, well, at first it was just one axis. It was just motion. Um, and then we developed a mechanical system that never came to market. Um, that's a very interesting story that we, Kessler kind of kept us from coming to market with that. We'll just, we'll just say that. But we pivoted as a business and turned it into an electronic painting device, which was the original Arc. And yeah. so that actually was a blessing in disguise because it led us on along the path that we're currently on, which is just more motion control, uh, which is our niche. So, um, yeah, so when you add in Arc 1, you have two axes. And... Um, yeah, arc two is basically four axes. You still have slide, you still have pan. We add in tilt, and then we add in the ability to focus. And then you have keyframes that you set up. Right now there's two keyframes that you can say, hey, here's A, here's B, and you can move all four axes between those two points. Very cool, and the focus point, right? Yeah, and the focus point, yep. So you can do that uh, either in a video move or you can do that in a, a time lapse. And so, and then you can do that with the onboard controls on the unit, which I still really value. Uh, I think professionals value as well. Um, mm -hmm. Like if you just having an app to control a product doesn't give me enough, like the amount of confidence that I need to trust that product. You know, because apps crash all the time, right? There's, there's bugs. And so I want reliable hardware that I can, I can control the unit with. So we kind of go both ways there. Yeah, I think that's huge. And, you know, I think, like, again, I think the app is super helpful and I think it's beneficial. I also think that I think what you're saying is just right on target with, you know, if you're going out in the field, you say you're going camping on like, I don't know, like a three day trip and, and you're doing star lapses out in the desert or something when you're camping yeah. and, you know, maybe you forgot your, your, uh, Omni charge and your, your battery isn't charged on your phone or you just don't want to have your phone on and, you know, get away for a little bit. Like you have that functionality on the device itself. And I think that that's yeah. huge. But I also think, Again, there is that it's it's nice to have both, and I and I think depending on where you are and what you're doing and who you are, that kind of um, that'll vary between each creator. Yeah, yeah, and that's so the first the first device wasn't app controlled, right? No, no, yeah. it was just all controlled through the controller. Through the controller, yeah, which is super super helpful. 
Um, so like, what's the development process like at, at Rhino? I know that, I mean, you've gone through many development processes of, cause you've done so many different products. Um, yeah. but what's like a normal, like, cause I know I've noticed a lot of the parts on, uh, my slider are like, they're kind of custom. That, uh, dude, it, the bolts that hold it together is custom. And then right. even custom. Like what's that, what's that process like? And I know it's days and weeks and months of, of prep, but like, and, trial and error but kind of like how do you decide okay this is the bolt or this is this is the part we need like what's that process like because i've just never i've never thought that way yeah it's i mean everyone's gonna have a different take on it um my starting place is typically like we do we use motors on a lot of things and we use batteries on things and so um i mean to, to be super honest there's no formal process right now there's okay there's a ton of discovery and a ton of brainstorming where I'll have 20 ideas I never execute on because it just right. where, but I'll basically take it to a place of where, all right, here's kind of what I want to research. Here's the product that I think might be a good idea. And then I'm a tech geek. So I look and say, what technology is required to make this happen? Uh, whether it's the motors needed and you know, you choose motors based on the form factor that, that you're looking at for the product. So I'll look at a, you know, a brushless DC motor or a stepper motor or just kind of start there and then say, like, what kind of torque do we need? And basically start very technical, um, not even getting into design at all. Like, honestly, okay. just looking at, like, what are, the, what are the primary constraints that this thing would need? And is it possible? And then throwing together a, a very quick bill of materials, which is basically everything that goes into the product and saying like, I think somebody would pay 400 bucks for this thing. Can I make it for 125, 150, you know? Yeah. Uh, and just, just starting like very vaguely in that area. And once you get to a place of where you say like, hey, I think this is feasible. I think there's a business case for this. Um, this is where we have failed in the past that I want to get a lot better at is at this point, we just go into, we go into development and we talk to our guys and say, Hey, here's the goal, but that's not well documented. Uh, it changes often. And so I think going into that phase with more of a spec, um, would, would be super helpful and save so much money. Uh, like the spec can still be flexible, but right. make it really knowing what you're doing, what you're committing to, you know, and then starting with what, you know, you call an MVP. It's a minimum viable product. So let's just get this, like our, our main thing is like, I just want to get to market, you know, um, and try to under promise and over deliver in that account, you know, so we're, Hey, this thing does two things really well and you go to market with it. And then you keep, to, this is one thing that with arc two, we, we did do super well on, honestly, because we kind of promised the world for it and our timeline didn't match that promise, you know? So we're still developing some firmware that should have been out six months ago, you know? Yeah. So that's something that I never want to do again. Uh, Cause it just puts so much pressure on the team and on me as the owner to be like, well, what do we do? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think I got that email the other day, actually. It was the, the, the updated firmware. Yeah. No, but I mean, I think, you know, as someone on the other end, I think some of that is expected. And, you know, as a creator, we're always looking for firmware upgrades and things like that. But um, it's an interesting uh, scenario to be in because here you are, you have this product. It's like the physical product. It's it's there. It's right in front of your face. But you might have said it was going to operate in a way that it actually it actually hasn't yet. And I think I, but I think that that's common in this industry, too, man. I think that, like, you know, cameras are doing that. Um, Canon's done that. Sony's done that. Um, you know, it's I, I have such a desire to make a perfect product. And when I, that doesn't happen, like it, it bothers me very deeply, <laughs> you know, as, as a creator, like if anyone's watching, they might feel that about their, their content. And, but at the same point, you have to launch, right? Like, you have to make money or you have a piece of content you've been working on. You can't edit it forever and you have to put it out there. And so with that comes new problems or new, new things to, to solve. So. Very cool. No, yeah. I think that that's 
great. Uh, Method Visuals put Art 2 as a beast. Thank you for your that's hard all work. I that. Really yeah, that's all I know. Well, another question that came in um, is, could we share our lighting setup? So yeah. do you want to show them kind of what you're working with there? You bet. Yeah. So this is kind of our hacked together studio area above our offices. Uh, this is a light panels, Gemini, yep. diffusion. I don't have a light behind this diffuser right now. But that would be your, your uh, kick light if, if so. Yeah. Yep. We have our, let's make sure you guys can see this, random junk here. This is actually the first uh, prototype for motion that we ever made. Oh, that's incredible. This is super special to me. Yeah. So this is like I the fir first electronics we ever made, and it works like a boss. So, is that the, is that the shoulder rig that you guys uh, created yeah. uh, early early uh, prototype? Yep. Yep. Yeah, we, we sold we sold a bunch of those, but it it wasn't really our focus for a while. So, we discontinued it a couple couple years ago. But then we got some Edison lights in the back. Um, these guys have hue light bulbs in them so that we can change the color cool. and we can change the color of the background as needed. Uh, Very cool. Oh, here's one cool little tip. These lights here are RGB floodlights that you can get from Amazon for like 30 bucks. Okay. So they're amazing for, for backdrops. Uh, we need to get you a, we need to get you a Lytra studio out there, man, for your setup. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, have you seen the new studio light? I haven't, man. It, it's a little bit bigger. You, so you're familiar with like the pro light? It's about four yeah. times the size of those and it's RGBWW and Dude. it's all app control and it has like effects on it and stuff. So we need to, once everything gets in, you know, in shipment, we'll, we'll definitely try to dial you in. Sweet, yeah, I love, I used to not think, I didn't even li like uh, bicolor lights. I was like 5,500K, daylight all the way. I don't need anything else. And then I switched to bicolor, and then when I tried out LEDs or uh, RGB LEDs, there's no going back, man. It's yeah, you're right. You're totally right, and it's, I mean, because you have full control, and like I love the Edison look too, and I think I've seen this set up in like um, maybe some promotion videos, promotional videos, yeah. Pot yeah. potentially with like the Edison bulbs. It's a great look. Just it's dynamic, and there's blues and magentas and like warm light and then you've got your your skin tones normal and everything i think it's a it's a really cool setup yeah yeah all right it works pretty good. what's that do you want to share your, your, your light setup yeah yeah I'll, I'll move it around a little bit so i have the uh i have a torch here and a torch here and that is what's giving me my red uh kicks there i got some uh drone lights that were getting charged up earlier there oh, this cool. is a vintage camera collection that was my grandfather's camera uh, from back in the day. I liked it so much. I got it tattooed on my arm. <laughs> wow. cool. And then um, back here, we have another torch or two other torches with the blue filter sets. Okay. And then let me spin you around. And then we have the light for studio behind there, which is absolutely nice. just a beast. Like I was saying, and it's uh, right there. It's got the uh, barn doors on it with diffusion. And I just wanted a little bit more diffusion to make it softer on the face. And then I have yep a pro hanging from the ceiling there. And then I have a pro right there with barn doors hitting the back of my head. Nice. So nice. technically a Rembrandt setup, but with just some accents as well, um, just to get that color focused nicely. Very so cool. yeah, lots of lots of lights are here. I also own uh, the light panel Gemini that you're using as well. Oh, uh, nice. I tend, I tend to use it more for um, I don't know, like maybe something that's like widespread or because they just get so bright, you know, because I can yeah. imagine yours is probably on like four or five percent right now. It's super low. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's really cool. Um, we had another uh, question come in and and I, it'd be nice to get your take on this from a different perspective. But uh, which camera is best for vlogging, do you think? Dude, I'm not a vlogger at all. Right. Uh, I could give the, the, like, the trite. It's the camera you own. Uh, answer you know um i mean i still have my a6300 which is still a, a great camera yeah uh, vlogging is interesting because you i would think something with good autofocus but i'm not a vlogger so i'm just kind of talking out of my butt right now uh, but with like if you're filming by yourself which i've done up here 
I use all manual lenses and it's a pain when you try to film yourself. So my answer would be something with good autofocus because that takes a huge part of the equation out. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah. I think uh, something wide enough and I, and I, if you are, if it's specific to vlogging, I would try to get something with a flip out screen. Yeah. Um, so you can see yourself and make sure your autofocus is working. Um, I'm a cinema guy, so I'm, I'm manual focus all the way, but I do know when I spin that thing around and I can't see my screen, then, then autofocus is definitely what I'm looking for. So yeah. hopefully that helps, uh, hopefully that helps that, uh, watcher out there. But, um, so I, I have a handful of other questions. We've, we've kind of went through the product line. We've talked about your background. Um, what's your favorite part of this whole process? I mean, and it can be from that pre-production aspect for us, it's like, you know, getting the idea out on paper and then going into development. But for you, you know, you can kind of transcribe that into what you do as an engineer. What are, what are some of those things that are just your favorite part or something that you just don't look forward to at all in your process? <laughs> what I don't look forward to. Yeah. I, I'm like the vision guy. Yeah. <clears throat> so like I share with, with some of my team, like my operations guy, if there's anything that's recurring, that should not be on my plate because it won't get done. Um, I'm not that guy who does recurring tasks. I need to delegate all of that. So, and that's something that I'm learning is this like, I need to, as, as a, a leader, I need to delegate well and say, you know, know what I'm good at, know what I'm not good at. The, the most favorite part of the, of the process, I think is, is like the beginning development of once like I'll get really excited about an idea. And once I pass that kind of honeymoon phase of like, Oh, this could be huge, you know, or, or once I kind of realize and it settles in, like I can weed out the bad ones and have the good ones there that would be good things to develop from that stage on is like heaven to me. It's, it's so fun, like sourcing different parts, uh, trying to solve problems with design and move things around uh, physically um all, so that point up until production is is yeah. the dream because production is a whole nother nightmare that you can make one thing really well <clears throat> but then when you try to make thousands of them um it it doesn't work that easy <laughs> so right. that's really stressful for me because you know i want the thing to be perfect and so that's where my team yeah. comes helps a ton um yeah yeah you and you've you know, you've got this team out there and you're in, you're in Washington, right? In yeah. We're gonna... Okay. Seattle. Yeah. I, I, I just, it's really cool. And I think it's a team effort. I've learned that too. Your first answer was just figuring out what you're good and what you're bad at, but dude, that's, that's hard for anyone to, uh, whether admit or try to figure out. Right. So I understand that being probably, probably your least favorite aspect of, of the actual you know process. So Aiden just wrote, hey, Kyle, I uh, yeah. mentioned in, in POV a few years ago, if you can recall, is that, is it of the, oh, is it on the table? Is that what he's at? Or still in work in progress. Um, so at Power Video, I chatted with Aiden over some beers in Ireland about basically having a, a small compact battery grip that was part of a cage. Um, Okay, he's saying, is it off the table? Got it. Off the table, uh, yeah. So this is the interesting thing about trying to develop things is when you have a small team, you can really only work on one product at a time. Yeah. Uh, and that's frustrating as a creator because I have everything, but you can't, you know, and that's just a limitation. And so I think Tilta last year came out with a pretty sick battery grip that it even has follow focus control built into it that communicates oh, wow. with their, their uh, nucleus nano. And so Aiden, to answer your question, when I saw that, it kind of crushed my dreams. I was like that, but in a way freed me up so I don't have to do it. Like sometimes when I have an idea, I feel compelled. It's like, I have to do this because th this needs to be a, a thing. But when somebody else does it, it's like, oh, cool. Like you guys are doing it great. So Tilta kind of made my dream go down the toilet. <laughs> Not uh, the same, you know but it's yeah. uh yeah. I, aiden's a good guy man power video i think you were there the year before i was there last year um man those are just some great people uh yep. that do the power video 
it's really cool yeah. yeah hopefully we can all get out there together and uh when everything gets back to normal and and have some beers and talk products and and create being creative that'd be awesome it's it's fun man like i i definitely could be around filmmakers more to identify those problems that need to be solved right <laughs> Um, because that's like we said at the beginning, unless you're solving something, what are you doing? You know, like it's, it's not yeah. worth it. Yeah. yeah. And like, and as, it's just, it's nifty for you because you've been in the creative field. So you're, you can solve your own problems, you know? Um, exactly. and I think that's huge. And I understanding both sides of the business, whereas some people who are, uh, in development and own businesses, they don't understand maybe their, uh, you know, consumer as well. And, for you to be on both sides, I think is super beneficial and it reflects in your work. So I think it's awesome. It's, it's fun, man. There's, there's a point uh, at which you can, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You kind of self-validate in a negative way. Um, there's a phrase I'm looking for. I can't think of. Um, but so whenever we have ideas, I always turn back to surveys where I say, I think this is a good idea, but what does the market say? you know right. and uh sometimes oh confirmation bias is what i'm thinking of okay yeah you know you can have this idea and just confirm your own idea either with the, the way you a answer the questions or interpret the data and so surveys are critical just having open honest people saying like hey would you buy this you know yeah. or compelling does this, does this excite you is this different is this new so i try to do that just slow down the process a little bit for sure. No, I think that that's great advice. And I always try to leave um, the watchers kind of on a good piece of advice. So is there any advice uh, for someone maybe looking to get into like a creative engineering role? I know that's very specific to what you do or just a filmmaking goal in general. Do you have any uh, like tips for them to how do they get involved more in the industry? Because I know there's a lot of people who watch <clears throat> who are whether they're established or not, they want to be a creator of some sort. So do you have any advice for, for them? Are you saying, are you saying like creator, like in my role, a creator more broadly as far as like content or, or marketing? I, I think, I think maybe as a business owner, as a, as a whole and, and kind of what you do more specifically in this case, because right. I think it can apply to a filmmaker as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's hard. It's like I said before, it's hard because you don't know what you don't know. And that's frustrating, right? Like, I, I wish I would have had a mentor that could have been like, Hey, Kyle, like, don't do that. That's a dumbass decision. You're going to waste hundreds of thousands of dollars on that. You know, like that's happened. Uh, and those are like sad things in, in our story. Right. Uh, but those are the things that teach you and train you on be better at, at what you do. So uh, I would always go back to um, like a phrase when this was kind of back in the day when all my buddies were like in their twenties and they, you have these entrepreneurs, right? You have these people that Gary V they're like, Oh, I'm going to change the world. You know, I was like, dude, like get, get, get over yourself. You know? Um, just like stop dreaming about things and start executing is what I would tell people. Cause you always have those friends. I don't know if you have them like, Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. It's like, we'll do it. Like literally yeah. like, like, what is stopping you from taking one step and executing? Uh, there's a book called good to great. And there's a concept in there called the flywheel effect where first step is you basically find out realistically, what can you be the best in the world at? And that takes time. You know, that's, that's, that's hard to do but once you figure that out and once you're honest with yourself you're like this i think is the value that i can add to this world you start executing it and you build momentum in that and and that's how you grow things and so yeah. but that just takes time you know that takes lots of opportunities won and lost say oh well that sucked or like hey that was amazing you know i really enjoyed that and i crushed it maybe that's like some gifting that i should lean into a little bit so yeah. just start you know start doing something and, and i think in my case i've taken i've taken too many opportunities you know but i've taken a lot of opportunities that have come my way just to see like what's gonna happen you know what's uh where's that gonna lead me and that's how you how your path goes right
Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, it's those, the doers that accept failure. And I think it's the, the people who want to do that are afraid to fail. Um, and I think it goes back to what we talked about, like in the first 15 to 20 minutes was just accepting that failure and learning from it. And I think yeah. like you have examples of that in your gear, like literally like products that you've created that didn't sell. And now look at, yeah. look at your flag product. Now you've figured out that niche of where you want to be. And I yeah. think even if you aren't trying to be a, uh, you know, an, an engineer, or like a designer or own your own company, even as a creator, that's something that that's the same concept applies, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Aiden, Aiden said uh, something and, here. Have to, go for it. Oh, no, go ahead. I'll let you go. Oh, yeah. It says it just says uh, have people you can trust so important to many people tell you what you want to hear and you need people to knock down. It, it makes you feel stronger. Yes, men are no good to be around. So, yeah, I think what he's <laughs> saying is just like they just it needs to be, you know, the yes, the yes men, the yes men, everyone who says yes, I think it's I missed that last part there. You said the yes I men. Did, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I got a call. The the uh, the yes men aspect. In, unless you're a doer, I think the yes men uh, like aspect it, it doesn't apply unless you're actually you know implementing. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Awesome, Kyle. Well, this was great, man. And like I said, it's been a while since we chatted, but I was I was really glad that you were able to hop on and. And again, just kind of, you know, the, the proof is in the pudding there where, where the products that we use and I use, I mean, I used it three days ago um, for the video that I recently cool. shot. And it's just, um, you've, you've changed the game as far as sliders go. And as I can, I think I can speak on any creator's behalf. We thank you for that, man. It makes our life easier. And, and I think that uh, I can't wait to see what's next for Rhino. Awesome, man. I appreciate it. Thanks everyone for watching, for tuning in, for your comments. It's absolutely great. Everyone follow, uh, go follow Rhino CG on Instagram and then visit uh, Rhino, rhinocamergear.com and check out the new products and let Kyle know if you have any questions, you can hit me up. But Kyle, I appreciate your time, man. And I'm uh, looking forward to the next time we get to hang out. Hopefully it's sooner than a year in NAB. Hopefully, hopefully, man. Thanks, Drew. <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. See you, brother. All right. Cheers. All right, guys, that was that was so cool. I could have talked to him for hours. Like, he's he's so good at at what he does, and it like I said, it's it's there. It's proof that the products that he has made in the past um, have literally made our lives as creators easier. And I I'm blown away. Like I I love their products. So I'm, I was really really excited, as you can tell, to to be able to talk with him today. And again, you can hit me up hit me up on my Instagram, Drew T forty three. And if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email, Drew at Lytra. And I appreciate you guys tuning in today. And we have another Creative Corner. We have it on th Tuesdays and Thursdays of every week. And we have another special guest coming on with us Thursday. And I'm really excited to chat with him about all things photography and travel. And again, I think that, I think that this is good. I think is we can get together as creators and you know, learn from others in the different worlds, whether they are designing a product or taking photos or videos or specialty in lighting. I think it's all a big educational platform and we're all here to help each other out. So thank you guys again for your time and thanks for sticking around. Um, Aiden said, such a great guy, just like you, man, full of ideas. Have had a lot of great combos with you both. Oh man, appreciate that. I can't, I can't wait for Power Video this year. I hope it happens and uh, I hope we get to hang out soon, Aiden and all the guys at Power Video. Thank you so much. And Again, uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Instagram or hit up Lytra's DMs. And this was the Creative Corner with Drew Williams and Kyle Hart from Rhino Gear. And we will see you guys on Thursday at the same time. Cheers.